Welcome back to Kongs R Us. In my last video, I showed you how to set up TechnoParrot from scratch and install Star Wars Battle Pot to run on this amazing emulator. So the problem though is that this game truly wants to run in a widescreen format. And your stock arcade 1UP monitor, as you can tell, is 5.4, kind of a 4.3 scale monitor as a square. So when you launch the game, it's going to show up only on the top half of your screen. And the bottom half of your monitor, if it's not black, it's still going to show these windows here. So, uh, you know, you have to minimize these. You have to set your desktop background to black in order to show in this setting. Um, so this can be an okay way to play. I was doing this for months. Uh, it seems okay to, to get it running this way. It's functional. Um, but we want to get this working full screen. And there's a resolution fix to do that, but there's some caveats with that. So let's exit out of this and show you guys the different ways you can get this full screen. So if your main goal is playing Star Wars Battle Pod and maybe a handful of other games that are okay using a widescreen format, all you need to do is right click your, your desktop, click on to display settings, and you can change your resolution from your stock setting 1280 by 960 up to 920 by 1080 as long as you have the graphics card that can move it there. So by doing this, this is going to change your screen setting here. So now that we've set our resolution to 920 by 1080, our whole monitor now is a little bit shrunken, but that's okay. Uh, it's going to play this game perfectly now. So if we go back to our UI for TechnoParrot, you'll see it a little bit narrow and squish. But when you go back to launch this game, this is going to run perfectly now, full screen, without any issues straight from the bat. So you can keep your same settings, your stock settings. Everything's going to run full screen now, as you can see in just a moment. Um, so this is an easiest solution to be able to run this game full screen with your current setup. If you're not doing anything else, Else with the game or playing other games this is a fine quick fix and you can just leave it as is this is a really perfect solution and again you have a full screen battle pod running here without any particular issues so let's just see some of the gameplay full screen in all its glory So that was Star Wars Battle Pod and it's full screen glory on your arcade 1UP and all you needed to do was change your resolution settings to 920 by 1080 Again, the easiest solution to be able to run your full Battle Pod full screen. There are a couple of patches that are available for download and I'll include a link in the YouTube description below. But this link here is a full Star Wars Battle Pod full screen auto fix that if you move this directly into your TechnoParrot folder and instead of running it from your UI or whatever you're doing, just double click on this patch and it's actually going to automatically change your resolution to 920 by 1080 from whatever resolution it's already at and then run battle pod uh, the thing about this is that it'll also when you exit the game still leave it in 920 by 1080 just as if you had manually changed it as well so this is another option for you as well uh, if you don't want to go into your resolution settings and change it you can use this patch just drop it into your techno parrot folder run it just like this as well so this is another good option for you to run battle pod full screen so in both instances, we're left with our stock monitor stuck in this 1920 by 1080 resolution. Now are there any downsides to this? Just a couple that I can see. First off, the text and everything is really squished and narrow. So you can see that even my logo isn't even a full perfect square anymore. It's this narrow, squished, um, you know, rectangle vertical view. Um, so that's going to stick for whatever you're looking at if you're going to be using this monitor for anything else. Um, does this have any impact on any other game? So this is my full playlist in LaunchBox. And I've been testing out a couple of different emulators. And there's some emulators that don't have any impact at all running in 1920 by 1080. The original Star Wars games, anything that's running in MAME, automatically adjusts the screen size and still runs the game in full screen so you're mostly okay with the majority of games so I'm using several different emulators to run my other Star Wars games, Dolphin for the Rogue Squadron games, as well as RetroArch to run the original Star Wars Score Squadron on uh, Rogue Squadron on N64. So both of these emulators, if you leave them just in the stock settings, when you try to run them in this new 920 by 1080 setting, you can see that the sides actually get cut off on the sides. And so while we had Battle Pod and other games running full screen, these games are now not full screen. So that was an impact issue that I was trying to discover and figure out a solution for. 
Uh, there are some emulation fixes though, so we can actually go into the settings of those and change them. So it's not going to be a huge deal. Um, everything that you see in here again just looks a little bit squished. So those are the only major downsides that I can find. I went through my entire playlist and was checking out other emulators and if they had any issues. Sega Model 3 runs fine, which is what runs Trilogy as well as some other games. Sega Model 2 is good. Uh, Redream, which runs these uh, Star Wars um, Racer game and the Racer Revenge game. PS2 emulator, PS3 emulator, everything runs fine in a native 920 by 1080 resolution uh, and there's actually some games that benefit from it too uh, including Luigi's Mansion that I'll mention so let's go over some of the emulation fixes and uh, get everything working in this new 920 by 1080 setting I think that's the solution moving forward is leave your stock arcade one up screen in this 1920 by 1080 resolution no need to go back to the native 1280 by 960 resolution uh, that is is a better kind of overall look but for gameplay it's not going to have a huge issue and there's so many more benefits for keeping your screen in 920 by 1080 so let's go into the emulation fixes so that we can get everything running full screen perfectly all right, so the first emulator that we're gonna fix is Dolphin. So go ahead and open up your Dolphin emulator UI. So the easiest way, if you already have it loaded in LaunchBox, is just right click on the game that runs Dolphin and then click on the open, open Dolphin. And uh, you can also get this into your emulators folder or wherever you're running it. And uh, again, the, the screen is just a little bit squished, but it's no big deal. So just go to graphics and here where it says aspect ratio, the default setting is set to auto and use full screen. So all we need to do is just force this to 16 by nine or actually stretch to window is what we're gonna do. And this is gonna be able to set everything back to full screen for these GameCube games that we're running. So that's it, just change auto to stretch to window. That's all you need to be able to run Dolphin. Here are just my other settings that I have. V-Sync is checked off, use full screen as well. Um, so the, in the enhancement section, native um, resolution, internal resolution, uh, 2x MSAA for anti-aliasing. Uh, so these are just my settings that I use for Dolphin here. Once you have that set up and we're running a game, let's just go ahead and run Star Fox Assault. Uh, you can see now it runs full screen perfectly with the new 1920 by 1080 stock resolution. Um, so everything looks good now. Everything's going to be running full screen. Uh, no main issues with it. And so Dolphin is good. This is step number one. So the next emulator that we're going to fix is RetroArch. So go ahead and go into your RetroArch UI. I have Rogue Squadron running using a RetroArch um, core. So we're going to open up RetroArch. And then in one of the settings under here is video and we're going to look at the aspect ratio which right now is set to core provided so we're going to actually just manually change this to 16 by 9 which is the ratio for a 920 by 1080 screen and that's it once we set retro arch here and we exit the game let's go ahead and fire up row squadron one more time and you'll see that it is now full screen as well. So those are the two quick fixes you could do for any of the emulators that have issues not running full screen. Um, those were the two things that, that I was testing and now it runs full screen beautifully, no major issues at all, um, running it in 920 by 1080 permanently. So those are the two emulators that needed some tweaking, otherwise everything else runs fine and you can leave it in that stock 1920 by 1080 resolution permanently on your RK one up screen. So there's actually a handful of Techno Parrot games that benefit from the 920 by 1080 resolution as well. One of them is Luigi's Mansion Arcade. So if you're originally trying to play this, if you had this on my playlist, or if you're just trying to run it on the arcade one-up screen, it actually cut off the, the sides of the resolution, and there's no way to fix that in the regular Techno Parrot UI. You have to run it in the full screen setting. But now you can see it's actually running perfectly in this widescreen, full screen mode. Um, so this is actually a huge benefit. So now you can play this game in a full screen mode um, on your arcade one-up. It's one of those ones where I had issues with playing it on your arcade one-up before, but now it works great. So um, this is one of those benefits for leaving it on. I just wanted to show you guys it loading up really fast um, and what it looks like. All right, so the yoke acts as a giant mouse when you're using it. I can actually change these analog settings in Techno Parrot to make it a little bit more sensitive to move, but it's not one of those games that snaps back to center. You kind of have to manually move the mouse and direction cursor at every way you want to move it to. So that is one of the, the downsides of this, but it's still pretty fun to be able to play this game on your home console. So Luigi's Mansion Arcade, super fun. Check it out, it's in its full screen glory. You can shoot stuff, pull, 
Uh, right now the cursor is just a little bit slow, but I can change the setting in TechnoParrot to make that more sensitive. But check it out, Luigi's Mansion full screen. This is another huge benefit of running your resolution at 920 by 1080. Another TechnoParrot game that benefits from running in that 1920 by 1080 resolution is Mario Kart Arcade GPDX. Now this is a game that also has some issues running. It needs to be run in administrator mode, so this pop-up is going to happen um, unless you automatically set TechnoParrot to run as an, as an admin, but that causes other issues as well. So you do want to have your keyboard handy just in case to pop that open. But this screen or this game has a custom resolution setting where you could have set it to the original 1280 by 960 and I was playing this game earlier on my Star Wars cap just fine um, but the only thing is that some of the lettering was cut off on the right hand side of the screen and so uh, it wasn't a huge deal for me you can see some sample gameplay with it cut off um, but now it's completely fixed when you're running it in its native 920 by 1080 resolution so here is uh, just a quick sample gameplay of the new look of this game in, a, in its complete original setting So you can see now that this is playing in full screen mode perfectly without anything cut off on the right hand side of the screen here. Uh, the, the logos and the map um, aren't cut off as it was in my original settings when I was running this in the old 1280 by 960. Uh, so this is just a nice benefit to be able to play this game in its full true mode. Uh, it plays great. I have this set as my break on my throttle. You can see it works fantastic. So if you're happy with this stock resolution at 920 by 1080, you don't need to do anything further, you're pretty much done. So this next section is optional for those that wanted to switch back and revert back to their stock 1280 by 960 resolution. If you go in your display settings and try to switch back, it's actually not going to work if you change your display settings back here. So if we went back to our display settings and change it back to the regular 1280 by 960, it's going to give you this where you're going to have size cut off on the screen, it's not going to revert back to our original settings. Um, so let's go back to the 920 by 1080 just so that we can have it set up here. So to fix it, you do need to do a couple of things. You can go to your NVIDIA control panel if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and you can actually set your resolution back to the native resolution through this setting and this is going to apply it and now we're back in our full screen resolution setting. So this is the original 1280 by 960. You can see everything blown up. And then again, the logo is perfectly square. Um, so this is your original settings to have everything set up here in this look. Um, but again, uh, we wanna be able to change this back and forth on the fly. So let's go over an auto hotkey fix to be able to set you up to do that. So in order to use this auto hotkey, an auto hotkey script allows you to change certain settings in your Windows um, platform with just a few keystrokes or button commands. And so to get this set up, you do need to install the auto hotkey program itself. I'll leave a link to the program itself in the description. And then I use a program called Joy to Key to map some of my arcade buttons as hotkeys to run the actual script itself. <clears throat> so go ahead and install auto hotkey and Joy to Key. Once you're done setting these up, we'll go ahead and install this custom auto hotkey script. So now that you have your auto hotkey program and joy to key installed, let's go ahead and go over what this script actually does. So auto hotkeys or AHKs are scripts that change different program settings within Windows on a single command or keystroke. So this script here, we're going to go to right click, edit notepad. You can see here that the this uh, hat one symbol, which is actually hitting the control on your keyboard setting and the number one, is going to change the resolution to 1280 by 960, which it currently is at. And the control two, or this hat two setting, is changing the resolution to 920 by 1080, the one that we were working on earlier, 1920 by 1080, excuse me. Um, and so you can set these hat keys to like a function key or like an unused key on your board if you don't want to. Uh, you can change it to the letter Z. Um, or you know whatever you want to but I'm gonna leave it as this uh, hat one just because it doesn't interfere with any other gameplay or emulators that I have going on so let's go ahead and save this this is our, our um, script and to run it once you have the program installed just double click on the program itself and then it's actually gonna run in the background in the bottom right hand corner you can see the little H key here it shows that it's running so now watch my screen on my arcade one up if I hit the control 2 key it's going to change my resolution settings 
1920 by 1080, which we were at earlier. And with the single stroke control one, it's gonna change it back to my 1280 by 960. So I can go back and forth whenever I want to with just a single command, control one or control two. And then this is gonna help set up some different gameplay options uh, when I'm playing. Um, so the other thing to do instead of having your keyboard handy is using that secondary program called Joyda Key. So let's set that up. So Joyda Key is another really cool program that I use with my LaunchBox setup. So I have it set up here. If you have it running in the background, it's going to show up in the icon tray here. And here's an example of some other functions that I have set up for Joyda Key. My start button is set up to button number one. My coin button is set up to control. And the cool thing about the APAC, if you watch my tutorial, is if you hold down the start button and you press these other buttons, it actually acts as a shift key and allows me to have another set of buttons to use. So the most common function I use is if I hold the start button and coin, I have this set to my escape key. So whenever I'm playing a game, I just have to hold the start key, press the coin button. It's going to initiate the escape function on my keyboard and exit many games. F4, control one, these are other things that I have set up uh, to use when I hit those two buttons, which is button. 26. But remember that control 1, control 2, the auto hotkey script? I have that map to these big giant red buttons, button number 17 and 18 in Joy to Key. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I press that on my screen. So now you can see that I have my Joy to Key set up for the hot script. So if I go ahead and hit the start button and press this big left button, Boom, my resolution now changes to 920 by 1080 on the fly with a single button. And I can do the same thing with this big red button, change it back to the native resolution, 1280 by 960. Boom, we got 1080 resolution here, haha, and then back to our 960 resolution here. So uh, this is a nice way to manually switch on the fly when you need to. When you're playing big box or a game and you want to switch to that resolution setting, you can just hotkey into it or hotkey out. Another advanced thing that I did was I used Joy to Key to map my escape button, which is that button 26, to that same auto hotkey command, control one, so that when I exit a game, I'm automatically going back to my native resolution settings. So if I need to play Battle Pod and my, my resolution is automatically changed to this 920 by 1080, by escaping the game, by hitting start and coin, I'm actually going back to my resolution setting and exiting the game at the same time. So it's a really cool uh, double fix to add into there. Um, it works pretty well for the most part. Um, so if you like your resolution settings in that native 1280 by 960, this is the advanced tutorial on setting it up so that you can get everything cleanly in its original state and only go into 920 by 1080 when you want to. So this is just an advanced tutorial. If you want to set up the hotkey, I'll leave a link to this specific hotkey script uh, in the description below, as well as links to download auto hockey enjoy the key setup um, so if you want to set this up uh, this is probably the most advanced option to have anything that you want on the fly instead of just setting it to 920 by 1080. So let's check out one last thing in LaunchBox so you can set up your original resolution screen but have Star Wars Battle Pod run and that 1920 by 1080. So if you go to the edit section for Star Wars Battle Pod and you set to what's launching, remember that patch that we had to launch automatically and change the resolution setting? That's exactly what we're launching this towards. So we're adding this Star Wars Battle Pod full screen auto for Windows 10 patch in here. And then we're going to select that as our launcher. And for the emulation for this game, we're not actually checking off using an emulator at all to run this because it's going to run TechnoParrot change our resolution setting. So let's go ahead and run Battle Pod and see what happens and then use the auto hotkey script to back out of it. See it in action. So you can see that it's automatically changed my screen to the 1920 by 1080 resolution setting. Again, I was in the native 1280 by 960 earlier and bam, everything's full screen. This is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, but now when we exit, here's the cool part. I'm going to hit my start and coin button at the same time. It's going to exit my game and at the same time, change my resolution back to 1280 by 960. So we did two birds with one stone exiting the game using um, you know, the joy to key escape function and the auto hotkey to change our resolution back. So this is the most advanced way to be able to keep your stock resolution settings, which I prefer personally, um, but it's not the easiest way to set up. Um, so that's just a really cool function uh, to show you how to set up Battle Pod using the auto screen patch and auto hotkey and joy to key to switch out of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanted to give a quick thanks to several people that helped me figure 
figure this out. Uh, Brad Diedrichs, uh, and there's a couple people that messaged me as well. Joel Gorski, Farron Poppletine, uh, you guys all kind of sent me some tips and things to get this up and running. So I appreciate all the support for people wanting to get this full screen. So we can do it now. We can run Battle Pod in full screen. So I hope you guys enjoy running this on your Arcade 1UP in full screen glory. You have tons of different options and ways to be able to get this up and running on your cab. Do what's best for you. If you want to keep it simple, keep your cab running at 920 by 1080 all the time. No issues with it. Just change some of your settings on your emulators. Um, if you like the stock settings and you want to be able to switch back and forth, go ahead and implement that auto hotkey fix. Uh, it's up to you. I'll leave some links in the description so you can decide what to do. In the meantime, I'm going to play some Battle Pod again. And uh, it's my favorite game on this cab. And uh, I love playing with this Suzu Hap controller. You guys should get one too. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.